Today's a very special day. Um, I just want you guys 
you know, definitely give Kiki a big shout out on his birthday today, right? Mm. Kiki the Kiki Smeister. You know, today is a special day. Today is his birthday. And um, super excited. So to give my son a big, big happy birthday, I want everybody to just go into the participant section and hit it up with some, with that green. Hit that yes, right? To wish him a happy birthday. Hit them with that green. So that way he can see you guys saying happy birthday. Oh, man. He's seeing the greens. He's seeing the greens, right? All right. The Kiki Meister. What you say, buddy? Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. So, you know, I appreciate you all. Um, as you know, today uh, we're going to talk about a lot of topics today. And today we have an amazing lineup for today, uh, things that we're going to talk about. And for those that don't know, um, you know, Money Talks is here to empower you and to keep on putting you in a position to win at all time. And that's why we got to always learn how the money works so that way we could be ahead of the game. And one of the things I want to tell you is that, you know, we're going to really break down this thing today. And just so you know, this week, this entire week is, you know, one of my favorite weeks because guess what I get to break down for you guys? I get to break down the wealth formula for them, right? So, you know, that's going to be super exciting, guys. So if you're taking good notes, please take good notes because, like I said, today we're going to break down the wealth formula, all right? This whole week, this whole week is talking about the wealth formula. So if you've never heard of the wealth formula before, what the, health, the wealth formula does, it helps you to understand how money works. And understanding how money works, meaning that you really truly know how to build wealth. And if you're somebody that wants to build wealth, if you're somebody that wants to really understand how this money thing work and what does it do for you, you really got to understand the wealth formula. So now if you never heard it before, the wealth formula is pretty much broken down like this. What the formula said is that money plus time plus or minus rate of return, minus inflation, minus tax, and that's what equal wealth. When you apply money to that formula, it will tell you how big your wealth will be and how big is your wealth and how you can determine how big you want your wealth to be based upon using that formula as a guide. All right, you use that formula as a guide, as a calculator. It's just like if you do one plus one minus two plus three, and that will equal an equation, right? You ever get those equations at school where they give you the answer, right? And they say, hey, solve for 10. And they tell you, what do you got a plus here, plus minus here, then plus here, then minus here in order to equal 10, right? So the 10 in this equation is the wealth. Right? All of us want some form of wealth. It's either you want 100,000 or you want 100 million. Either you want 100 billion dollars, right? So all of these things require you to do things with a formula because you gotta understand how money works, right? It's not just you spend it and save it and you'll be rich. No, that's the reason why many people never acquire wealth. It's because they never learn how to rich keep getting richer. You know, you know I once heard uh, a very wealthy man says, right, that you could take away all his wealth from him today, right? Or he could give away his wealth to everybody in the world. And somehow, some way, he would obtain all that wealth right back to him. And he said it's because most of the people in the world do not understand how money works. He said, I will create companies where people would have to spend their money. And he will create opportunities where people have to give him back that money because he didn't know how to apply the formula. You see, guys, this formula is something that you should have learned before you even got access to money. Because having access to money, I want you to think about this, guys. Think about this. If the goal, if the goal is to get money, right? Now, let me break it down for a little bit. If the goal is to go to school, right? go on and get good grades to eventually go to a good college. And then eventually from that good college, you, you end up in a good job, right? That's the goal, right? So if the goal is to then get the good job so you can make good money and live a good life, right? That's the goal. So if we already know the goal is to eventually get to the money, then we 
while we're learning how to make a living, we should also learn how to save a fortune as well. Because the goal is to get to the money. The whole thing is about money, guys. The whole thing is about money. So if that's the goal, then we got to learn about it earlier before we get to money. But let's say that's too late for some of us. Like for me, it was too late for me. When I learned about this, I was 23 years old, right? So never too late because the, flum, the formula works for you regardless. It doesn't matter how old you are. So today I'm going to break down the money part today, all right? That's what I'm going to break down today. And tomorrow I'm going to break down time plus interest, right? And then on uh, Wednesday, I'm going to break down, um, you know, the, the power of inflation, and then, you know, Thursday, I'm going to break down taxes. Oh, man, you don't want to miss that one. All right. And then Friday, I'm going to help you understand how to put it all together and understand how to use the wealth formula to create a financial foundation for yourself and your family. All right. So let's get into the money. So money. Let's talk about what money is first. Now, money is not what you think it is. Money is not really money. And what I mean by that is that money, I've lost its real origin and real value in 1971. In 1971, they took what is your in your pocket off the gold standard. So it really doesn't have any true value. You know, there's no true value because ever since they took us off the gold standards, they changed the word money to now what's called fiat currency. And what you have in your pocket and what you spend and exchange it to obtain values like a car or a home and all these things, all that is is just a fiat currency. So we have currency. So the, the, the bigger problem is that we don't even understand how money works, but we don't understand how currency works, right? And that's why we really got to have these money talk. So to get that currency, or if you want to call it money, to start building wealth with it here in America, right, or anywhere in the world, you got to get into one habit. You got to learn how to pay yourself first. All right? You got to pay yourself first. Warren Buffett has a very famous quote where he says, you know, don't try to save what is left after spending, but you must spend what is left after saving, right? And that's why we encourage families to truly understand that, hey, you have to pay yourself first. So the biggest question that you're probably asking yourself or you probably want to ask right now, well, Kian, how much do I save? How much should I put away on a monthly basis to build wealth? Well, to be honest, if I was to be very um, straightforward, I don't know that number. I don't know what amount of currency or money you should save on a, mo on a weekly, monthly, daily basis because I can't give you that answer until I know what is your FIN number, right? I have to know what is your FIN number, known as your final income number. But today I'm not going to get into that deep topic, but I'm just going to talk about um, the final, uh, your, your, how much you pay yourself. Now, when it comes to paying yourself, guys, I want you to start treating you, right? And when I say you, I'm talking about self. I want you to treat yourself like a physical self, like an actual bill, right? Just like you could know that your car note is a physical bill. Just like you know your mortgage is a physical bill. Just like you know your credit card is a physical bill, right? All these things, I want you to treat now you, the physical person, like a bill. Now, the bill that you're going to treat yourself like is a bill that you got to pay. And when we talk about paying yourself first, we're talking about, well, how much are you willing to pay you, the bill? Uh, you should be the most expensive bill in your house, okay? If anybody's down for that, you know, hit me with a green. If you agree that you should be the most expensive bill in your house, light me up with some green right now, right? Because the thing about it is that if you are the most expensive bill in your house, then you got to really learn how to put away 5 to 10%, 15% or more if you can, so that way you could be ahead of the money game, right? You got to start saving 5 to 10%, 15% or more. That's how much you should be paying yourself. If you can get to a point where you could pay yourself uh, 
or 40% dead man, that's amazing. That's an amazing accomplishment where you could lower your expenses to like, you know, 20% or 30% and still put away 30% and still able to enjoy 40% or you could do the opposite, right? You could put away 40% and enjoy another, um, you know, uh, 40%, uh, you know, it just depends. But you got to really start paying yourself first, guys. You really got to start looking at your paycheck and say, hey, while I'm putting out money for the bills, man, the car, man, you got to get compensated too because the money that you save today will be the money to save you later on, right? The money that you're saving today will be there to save you later on because that's the reason why, guys, we teach families that you need to start saving this money. Because if you don't have that money to go invest or apply to the wealth formula, then how are you going to be wealthy? But most of you are already saving this money. Most of you are already started to save this money, but you're just saving it in the wrong places, right? Some of you are putting away, you know, 10, 20% of your income in, a, in, in your banks, right? Some of you are putting it away in your 401ks. Some of you probably even put it in a Roth IRA. Now, you may look and say, well, Keon, is that a bad thing? Well, it's just a matter of understanding how taxes work, which that's why it's important that you come on these calls to learn how taxes work because most of you are putting away 15%, 10%, 5% in your 401ks, your bank, you know, your, your, your Roth IRAs, right? Most of you guys are already doing it. It's just that you're probably not applying it to the right vehicles so that way you can use a wealth formula and really, really use it as a guide to build up that wealth. So even if you start doing some simple things like buying only what you need and not what you want, you could really start saving a lot of money. I mean that you can start saving so much money. I mean, God, if you just, if you just live below your means and you know, uh, one of my mentors, he's a billionaire, and, you know, God rest his soul. And, you know, he taught me something so profound, you know. You know, when he was alive, and the first time I met him, I remember he, he always tell me this. He always says, you know, you got to live a lifestyle now that most people don't want to live. So that way you can live a lifestyle later that people can only dream about. And I never forget that, man. I never forget that when he told me that. He always tell me, man, look broke, stay rich. You know, look broke, stay rich. He's like, people gonna make fun of you. People gonna question you. People gonna, and he's like, dude, if you feel that you have to impress people, then it's not a broke or a rich problem. It's a, it's a self-esteem problem, right? He's like, dude, who cares if someone think you look broke? Are you broke? You know, who cares if someone make fun of your car because you're driving a hoopty right now? So what? So what if you're renting and you don't own a home? So what? Who are you trying to impress, dude? If you're comfortable, if your family's happy, if you're healthy, if you have God, you know, who cares what nobody thinks? Who are you trying to impress, right? And that was such a valuable thing because, you know, we live in a society now where we do things to impress people. We'll go buy a Mercedes Benz when we should have really came home with a Honda Civic. Right. I used to be like that. Like right now I'm doing some car shopping. Right. And I was looking at like BMWs and stuff like that, because here I am self-esteem now. Right. You know, I'm looking at, oh, I can't drive a Honda. I can't have people see me in a Honda Accord. You crazy. I'm Mr. Finance. Right. And then I checked myself. I was like, who are you impressing? I was like, even if they want to call you broke or whatever, I will play piggy bank versus piggy bank. You bet your piggy bank versus my piggy bank. And if you have more in it, you get my piggy bank. But if I got more, you got to give me yours, right? So it's almost one of those things like, who are you trying to impress, right? Because when you buy all these things, guys, all you're doing is just robbing your future. All you're doing is just robbing the retirement that you want. All you're robbing is the people that matters the most, which is yourself, Right. If you wanted that vacation type of retirement where you're going to trip every month and go see the world, then if you're not saving that money today because you're too worried about what people think about you, then you will never get the gold that you want. Right. And then if you're not even using the wealth formula, then you definitely won't obtain that goal. So that's why we really got to truly stop caring what people think and start caring about self. Number one, you.
you got to start paying yourself first. So if you make some of these small changes, guys, you're going to have a lot of big money, a lot of big money. So let me show you some of the small changes that you can make and how this will impact your portfolio. Just imagine the fact that if you make some small changes, right, and how this is going to be, give you some big money, imagine that the fact that you have a spending habit right now. Most of us do. You may not admit it to me. You may not admit it to yourself. But you, you, you would find ways to spend money. You know, like today's my son's birthday, and I, I give him like this, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, I guess like an open card day, right? where anything he wants he gets today right and i do that for, i go all out for birthday because i'm not really big for like holidays and stuff like that so i kind of go all out for birthdays kind of scenarios so today it's kind of like his day whatever he wants he really gets because i don't really do the christmas thing i don't really do the easter thing and stuff like that you know not that i'm religious basis or anything it's just that i'm not really big on the holidays because it's unnecessary spending of money to me so on birthdays, you kind of like, I guess you make up for all the other days that you don't get, right? So I go all out for birthdays. And, you know, I'm looking at it, and, and, and he's so modest, guys. He really is so modest. I'm looking at him and said, hey, so what you want? You know, today's open card day. And he looked at me, and he's like, man, just some Roblox. That's about it. And you should have seen, he got so excited for a $25 gift card. <laughs> right? He got so excited for that. And, you know, he's very modest. He, you know, one of the things that I, I, I always tell my son, and I'll give you guys this, you can use it. You know, I always ask him and I said, um, you know, what would you rather do? Buy a pair of shoes or would you like to own a piece of the company? Right? And the same amount of money that I would spend to buy, like, if I like Jordan or something, I tell him, let's buy Jordan stocks. Right? Let's buy Nike stocks. Right. Let, let's. Um, oh, you like this? Well, let's buy some stocks from it. Right. Let's own it. Right. And spend the same money. Right. Because if he wants it, so I give him a choice. I said, you want to own it or you want to be a, a, a customer? You want to be an owner or a customer? Which one? Right. And I give him choice, and it really helps him to really see the difference in values of buying and versus owning something. Right. And customer versus the owner. Right. And you know, it's really cool. It's a little. in your life because if you just start saving ten dollars a day just ten dollars a day guys did you know over 30 years from now if you did this like say for you if you started this 30 years ago or if you're young like me i'm 32 years old right so 30 years from now of saving ten dollars a day which is 300 bucks a month and i just got an average return of eight percent over that 30 year period on this money right I would, you know, 30 years later, I would have had 447 plus thousand dollars, guys. You hear what I'm saying to you? Imagine you started this 30 years ago, right? And today you would have have 447 plus thousand dollars. So every time you're spending $10 a day, I want you to remember that you're spending an accumulated amount of 447 plus thousand dollars a day. That could have been your money for you later on. Then if you if you save $20 a day, imagine that you started saving $20 a day, right? Over a 30-year period of you saving $600 a month and you just got an average return of 8%, you would have had $894,000 plus dollars. So every time you're spending that type of money, just look at the fact that you're spending I'm the black Jew, right? Because I really, truly just want to hold on to my money and put it to work. I really have. You know, one of the things I do, you know, back in the days, you could never, ever see me stop and pick up a quarter or a penny or whatever off the ground. Let me tell you, not me. 
<laughs> Don't you dare laugh at me. I <laughs> let me tell you, I can't walk past a penny now. <laughs> you know, I have a friend. His dad actually owns a few buildings here in Jersey, and he's Jewish, right? And I always said to him, I always joke around, and I just ask him. I was like, hey, I was like, hey, you know. Not for nothing. Is it true that, you know, Jewish people cannot walk past money on the ground? And he looked at me and was like, would you walk past money on the ground? I was like, what's the difference between a $100 bill and a penny? And I was like, um, it's a hundred dollars, <laughs> you know? You know, but it's just those mindset, right? It's just the way you see things and how you think about things. Like me, I tell you, I will not walk past a penny. I'll be looking around, like right now, I'm even talking about it, and then subconsciously, I'm looking. Like if I ever see a penny or a nickel or whatever, because I feel like, man, I got a penny richer. Oh, I'm 25 cent richer, right? And that money adds up. It accumulated, guy. It's it, it, it's a, it's accumulation of money over a period of time. Everything is about compounding mindset, compounding efforts, right? So if you think about what can you cut back on? What can you cut back on? Can you cut back on your cable bill, right? Can you learn how to probably save some money on your home insurance or your car insurance? These are things that we help families with, guys. That's why our goal is to help every family to learn where they can find the money. And if they can find the money, we can show them how to put that money to work for them and use the wealth formula and use the, the build them a strong financial foundation. So. Yeah, guys, that's what it's all about, man. So finding money is just really about paying yourself first, you know, just 5 to 10% put away or maybe even understanding the idea that you got to buy only what you need. Not because it's on sale doesn't mean that you got to buy it, all right? Because it's like, let me tell you something. When you see something on sale, that's pretty much the, 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 the price that it should have been from the beginning. Did you know that? And then when you buy it, when it's not on sale, that's the markup price. That's why they say there's a difference between wholesale and retail, right? So when you bought a retail price thing, that's the markup. When you buy things on wholesale price, then that's the price that they would have given you just to make a profit. You see, guys, you know, I worked in retail for a while, so I understood this whole concept. And when I realized the markup price versus the pay, and then I look at the inventory sheet, right? And the inventory sheet, when I used to work in the dairy department, I used to take in the delivery for the milk. So the milk would come from an outside vendor, and I would see their actual price that they charge, like A&P, for it. And then I would look at the price that I would go in the back room and price it at. And I was like, damn, these guys are making a killing, right? When I look at the prices, I was like, man, it's like they would pay like almost – like 40 cents a gallon on the milk, right? And then they flip it around and then sell like a gallon of milk back to you like, you know, two, three dollars. And then when they have it on sale at like one ninety nine, they're still making a killing, right? So is, is that those little things, man, that really let me realize and understand how this whole game is being played, right? And I was like, man, if so many people really start becoming conscious of this, <sighs> Oh my God, man, it's either we're going to become very super wealthy or the price is going to be inflated like crazy because people caught on to the real game that's being played out here, right? So it's things like this, man, that really helps us to really want to empower families to have money talks and really do these little calls so we can really, you know, inform you about how things really going on and how does it work. So it's all said and done. Good morning, man. When it's all said and done, it's all about understanding money. And once you understand that, you can really start putting that to work, guys, and really, really be ahead of the game. So what I want to do is um, open up the call, right, for anybody that have any questions or any feedback from today's Money Talk. Um, so if you'd like to share, right, all you got to do is just press the yes button or you can raise your hand. And I'm going to call on you just to share your takeaway from today's talk and what did you learn. So while you guys are pressing the yes um, button or raising your hand, um, I just want you guys to know that um, tonight 
If you like what you hear on the Money Talk, I would love to invite you back tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time, guys. 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to tell you more about our campaign and what it's all about. And it's going to be really going really well tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And today's speaker and educator will be Valerie Tapsoba and will be hosted by Nishida Forbes. And just so you guys also know, you know, also Saturday, um, we also have... Um, the same thing where we're going to talk about our campaign. So if Monday don't work for you, but maybe Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time may work for you. And you get to come here from a speaker and an educator. Um, her name is actually Miss Patricia Campbell. She's going to be one of our guest speakers and, um, and educators as well. So. Tony, you're you're live. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, you kept cutting in and out, so I wasn't sure if you called on me. I just wanted to say that I always enjoy money talks, and it, even though I've heard the information before, you know, hearing information repeated over and over again, it constantly gets stuck in my head, and I learn something new every time. So. I love being here and I would encourage everyone to invite their friends and families, you know, to take the time out, whether it's on their drive to work or their morning workout or whatever they're doing to uh, participate and to, you know, come learn some valuable information. Okay, go ahead guys, I'm sorry. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Sheila. Um, I uh, agree with Tony. You know, these money talk calls, you know, like really get you to start thinking. It's like power to your brain. It's like the exercise that you do for your body is like exercise for your brain because it really gets you to start thinking about your own financial situation. And I like the way he broke it down this morning because you know uh it's majority uh ladies on his phone and you know you know when we see that dress or those pair of shoes you know we be like really really want it unless it's something specific that we're buying it for uh will depend on when we purchase it right so if i can like wait it out and wait till it goes sell you know then i will do that so i love the, the way you broke that down about how they how prices are marked up and then when they put it on sale that's actually what the cost of it is so you know it's just a, a food for thought for me because you know when i'm when i was out there doing a lot of shopping but since covid you know it kind of saved me from doing so much shopping and and um allowed me to see how much i could be saving uh even more um you know to have those types of types of thoughts in mind you know wait till they put on sale but then not just be out there spending just because i want it but is it something that i really need so i really enjoyed money talk on this morning and i'm looking forward to miss valerie you know uh presenting and being the guest speaker on tonight so guys if you can log on on, on tonight don't miss the money talk call on tonight when we're uh talking about the campaign and thank us it is going to be amazing so thank you for allowing me to share You're very welcome, Ms. Sheila. Anybody else would love to share? If you'd like to share, you can just unmute and share. I'll take three more. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, I'm just taking a quick minute to just say um, that um, just listening to the money talk um, it is information. That All right. So, hey, I tell you this. Okay, I think we have one more, Michelle. Hey, are you hearing me? 
I will get hear you. I think you're a little low, but go ahead. Like, not talking. I think you're muted. Okay. I, right. I guess I'm probably having some. Um... Okay, here you now. You're loud and clear. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that um, the information is just um, really food for thought, and even though it's information that you've shared with me before, um, just hearing it uh, is just a stimulant to, or a reminder to stay focused on what is important, which is, you know, monitoring and managing and budgeting. And um, it's so easy for us to get off track with that, but hearing it over and over really gets you back on the, gets you back on that track that you need to be watching how you spend and watching how much you are saving. So thanks for the talk. I mean, you're absolutely welcome, Michelle. Definitely happy to have you on the Money Talks. And like I said, guys, tomorrow we're going to break down time plus rate of return. And we're going to break down why those two things play a very major role when you use them together inside the Money uh, Wealth Formula, okay? So with that said, guys, thank you all for tuning in. And on the count of three, let's all wish out. And I'll see you guys later at this very same login. You can come back in at 7 p.m. Eastern time to learn more about the campaign. And we have two phenomenal uh, leaders and powerful women in our campaign that's going to share with you about what the campaign is all about. All right. So on the count of three, let's all wish out. One, two, three. Let's wish, guys. World team, World one team, team. One, one team, one dream, one, dream. one, dream. one, dream. one, dream. one call, one call. One call. One call. Yeah. Have a great right. day. Have a blessed day, everybody. Good day, everybody. See you guys later. Okay.